Welcome to The Close-Up Show, a podcast and YouTube channel for photographers and videographers. I'm Nick Boris, and if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. This channel is dedicated to helping you grow from a foundational level to performing advanced techniques, expanding your knowledge on the business side, gear side, but most importantly, taking your questions from YouTube comments and the Close-Up Podcast Instagram using hashtag Close-Up Podcast, then turning them into content for you here. Today we're talking about the six types of camera lenses. Welcome back. All right, I encourage you to actually go and grab a notebook and a pen to write down these questions because answering these questions will actually help guide you to finding which lens is gonna be the best lens for you. So before buying a lens, you should actually ask yourself and then answer at least these questions. Number one is what are you shooting? Are you shooting photos or video? What's your subject? Are you shooting in low light, daylight, tight environments that you're gonna need a, wide, a wider set of lenses? what's your niche and then the most important thing is is what type of budget do you have or what's your price range for purchasing these lenses what specific job do you plan to accomplish with each lens you look to purchase answering these questions will provide a foundation for where to start when you're looking to purchase a lens having the answers will actually allow you to stretch your money further because you'll get more out of your purchase as opposed to just going out there and buying whatever you think is cool or what you're seeing other youtubers uh, have on their cameras that might not fit what you need five things i want to mention prior to diving into the lenses are some of the common terms and knowledge to better understand uh, what these lenses are and how they work the first thing is a fast lens is a lens that has a aperture around 1.2 to 2.8. The reason they're considered fast lenses is because they actually allow you to adjust your camera shutter speed to a faster setting while allowing more light to reach the camera sensor. Two, the lower the aperture of a lens, the more bokeh, and that is pronounced bokeh, at least according to Google. Number three is investments. Each lens is an investment. The higher quality glass that you purchase, the higher chance it'll have in retaining its value. So buying an expensive lens also positions you for a chance to level up your camera gear, considering most lenses, if cared for, hold their value so you can actually resell it and then go ahead and purchase a more expensive or better lens or one that better suits you. Four is fixed aperture. Fixed aperture is when a lens's f-stop doesn't adjust upon zooming in or out. Hence, the aperture is fixed. These are usually more expensive lenses than you would find in variable apertures. So number five is a variable aperture lens is a is a the opposite. Generally less expensive due to the fact that the f-stop adjusts according to your focal length as you zoom in. Now let's jump into what these lenses are all about. So the six types of lenses I'm going to go over are kit, prime, super zoom, pro spec, macro, and speciality. The kit lens is going to be a Canon zoom lens EFS 18 to 55 millimeter variable aperture f 3.5 to 5.6 lens. The prime lens is going to be a Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. Our super zoom is a Canon zoom lens 24 to 70 millimeter. That is a fixed aperture 2.8 L series lens. And then you have the pro spec that is going to be a Canon zoom 70 to 200 fixed aperture 2.8 L with image stabilization. And then throwing it back with a macro Minolta MD zoom 100 to 300 millimeter fixed aperture 5.6. And then finally, is fisheye and tilt shift lenses categorized underneath speciality lenses, all of which you can actually find by clicking the link in my description under my gear. The kit lens is the starter lens for most videographers and photographers. Usually you find this lens with the camera upon purchase of the camera body. They're usually zoom lenses that add little to the camera's price, yet can still uh, produce a nice image quality. Some of the positives are that they're lightweight and inexpensive. So if something does happen to the lens, you'll not have to you know, hurt your wallet too bad to replace them. They do, however, have a compromised optical quality, smaller focal range, and no weather sealing. My biggest issue with them is the fact that they're a variable aperture lens having Having your exposure set and then you know zooming in to only then have your exposure compromised could possibly cost you the moment you were actually waiting to make that capture. Of course, most things can be fixed in post, but as professionals, we should always try and capture in camera and then enhance in post. The prime lens that I'm gonna go over is a Canon 50 millimeter lens. 
This is probably the most commonly used lens ever. Uh, this is what the, the majority of photojournalists, studio, portrait, street photographers, and more use in their camera bag or have in their camera bag. The reason for its common use is it's because they're said to be the best representation of what the human eye sees. So the distortion you get from these lenses is quite accurate, making the images a lot more re reliable and relatable in representing a nice image. It also helps that they're fast lenses ranging from f2 and less and produce a high bokeh blur so that the background that you're seeing is nice and blurry, making your subject really stand out. A prime lens for the most part is more expensive than your zoom lenses. Everything is usually higher quality, the glass, the body, the speed of the lens, uh, and then you add on autofocus and image stabilization into the lens or even more and you've got yourself a quality high priced item if you're like me and you're on a budget you can actually find vintage prime lenses though they'll more than likely be manual focus only but for a great price and exceptional quality glass you really can't beat it our super zoom is an all-in-one lens that usually varies from wide angle to telephoto you'll find no need to really change lenses in most situations considering the versatility of these types of lenses the compact design provides running gun shooters with safe space inside their camera bag because these lenses have more moving parts and glass it's common for optical quality to be compromised particularly when you are all the way zoomed in a few other common negatives that you'll want to look for and be aware of are variable maximum apertures and slower autofocus. I will also mention that lens quality is becoming really good, especially with Canon's new RF glass, Sony's FE glass, Nikon's Z glass. Lens technology, however, is still slower than the tech that goes into camera bodies. So further your research prior to making a lens purchase. Before talking about the last three lenses, I hope you're getting a ton of value from this episode. If you haven't already subscribed, it would mean the world to me if you did. Or leave a like, leave a comment. They really do make a difference. If you know somebody who could benefit from this video, do a good deed today and share it with them. If you didn't like it, leave a comment as to why and what you would change so that we can actually grow together in providing a higher quality content here on YouTube or in this podcast. Since we're all stuck indoors, what better time to learn? I've been building a photography course since last fall and hoping to release it this July or August. So DM me on Instagram if you're interested in learning more about that course. Moving on to the last three lenses, our Prospect lenses offer weather sealing, and low distortion glass to reduce chromatic aberration. The build quality of the lenses are exceptional and feature a fixed aperture. You'll end up paying more for these lenses that are heavier and larger than most other lenses because of the quality that is put into the build. The weight of these lenses is due to the higher quality materials that make up the exterior and the better glass in the interior of the lens. Due to the build quality of these lenses, they'll actually retain their value a lot longer over the course of time. Let's go over macro lenses. So macro lenses let you shoot up close images, life-sized or larger. So used as a normal lens in most situations, that also has an excellent optical quality and large aperture. These lenses can shoot up close because their focal distance is shortened. This results in sharper image quality that's supported by a full focusing range. So like most Prospect lenses, these are also very expensive. They do have limited focal lengths and are usually only available as fixed focal length lenses. The last lens type is speciality lenses. So these are your tilt shift and your fisheye lenses. I would almost recommend renting these types of lenses unless you shoot strictly like skateboarding, snowboarding, any type of extreme sport or architecture. The fisheye, also known as super wide and ultra wide, is really popular among architectural and interior photography, as well as 360 degree VR images because it shoots with 180 degree angle of view. The tilt shift lens lets you tilt the front of the lens or move it up and down relative to the camera body. Each movement will increase or decrease sharpness and contrast, or your camera will stay parallel to the subject in front of you. Remember the best way that I can answer your questions is to DM me on Instagram, close up podcast, and use hashtag close up question. TikTok at nick.boris, Facebook at Lively Productions. Look up lively.productions on Instagram to see my work. And if you have any questions, please let me know.